Hi, my name is Neil Blevins, and this is a tutorial showing you how to use curvature inside Max 2017.1. So, uh, for those of you who've been following along, this is the fourth video I've done on the subject, and hopefully the last. Uh, but it's still worth looking at the other three videos um, on my YouTube channel, because uh, they have uh, useful information on other ways of achieving curvature. But my general plan is to use this method for doing curvature from now on. So again, hopefully this will be the uh, last video in the series. So this is uh, a robot tread model, which I've used before in other tutorials. Um, and the way you get curvature inside of 3ds Max 2017.1 is this modifier called the data channel, which you can see here. And what the data channel basically is, is it's a way to get information from your mesh perform some operations on it, and then export that in a number of formats. So if you look here, these are the various operators you can use. And you can, for example, get the curvature of your mesh, you can get the velocity of your mesh at a particular point. Uh, there's a whole lot of really uh, useful um, inputs here. Then you can do a process on it, like for example, you can uh, clamp the result, you can invert the result, uh, a bunch of other ones in here and then you can export it in a number of ways. So you can export it as a vertex selection, or you can export it as um, a, a map channel, or um, um, uh, vertex colors, or a number of other things. So there's a, actually, this modifier can do a lot of stuff, but this tutorial is only going to be dealing with a very small section, which is the, uh, the curvature. But it's definitely worth checking out all the other options uh, later on. So while you can add the data channel modifier by hand, um, what I am going to do is I am going to, there you go, um, I have a couple of scripts which I wrote which are available as part of the Soulburn script pack which you can get on my website neilblevins.com and these are, scripts are specific for doing curvature. So uh, the first script is called Curvature Maker and um, this used to be called uh, Corner Edge to Vertex Map because that's the old way that I used to do curvature. And uh, you'll note you still have a mode to use that method inside of here. So if you want to use the older method or if you have an older copy of Max, you can still do that. Um, but uh, otherwise, um, I would use the data channel version. And what this is going to do is um, it's going to take uh, areas that are flat and it's going to make it one color. It's going to make areas that are convex and make it a, a different color. Areas that are concave and give it a different color. And then for the data channel options, there's a couple of other things down here. There's curvature scale, uh, which is basically the more the, 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 the scale is, the stronger the effect. And then what map channel you want to export as, which I'll explain in a, in a minute. So let's hit apply. And so what this has done is it's applied a data channel and it made a curvature here in the operator stack. And sets the curvature and you see that the scale value here is the same as the, the scale value there. So whatever you put in here, uh, it goes in that spot. Then after it gets the curvature of the object, it doesn't do any uh, modifications to it, but then it outputs a vertex output. And what it's doing is it's outputting a map channel and it's setting the number to 66, which is the number that I had down here. And what this is gonna do is uh, this allows you to then uh, take the information of the curvature and they use it inside the material editor, which I'll show you uh, momentarily. So if you look at here, um, the, depending on the size of your mesh, you might need to change the scale value a little bit. So if you increase this to a higher value, you see more and more stuff is getting grabbed. And then if you reduce this, less and less stuff. So in general, you want to uh, uh, muck with this until you get a value that seems um, about average. Um, usually I found 10 to be a good value um, for this sort of stuff. So now that we've got that, let's go into the material editor. So I'm going to assign this material to uh, this object here. And what this material is, um, I'm using V-Ray here, but this works inside of um, all the other renderers as well. So instead of like the V-Ray blend, you could also use a regular blend material, but I'm just going to use the V-Ray version. So this is going to blend between two different materials. There's a metal material, which in this case is really simple. It's just a gray color. You know, obviously this would be better as an actual reflective material. Uh, and then it blends with a uh, paint material here. And the paint material, again, is just a very simple material with a, a color to it. And then I have the mask, which is over here. Now, what this mask is, um, again, those of you who saw um, the other tutorials about doing curvature, this mask is very similar. And what it's doing is, in, here, let me just show you the, 
So you can see how it's uh, set up here. So what this is, is I put a gradient ramp, and then the gradient ramp I set to map channel 66. And what this is going to do is this is going to take the curvature which was being applied to map channel 66 and it's going to pump it into this gradient ramp. So this gradient ramp now captures whatever this curvature is here inside of this map. So rendering this map would give you exactly these results. So I then put this in an output just so that I can clamp this a little bit. This isn't necessary but I sometimes find that clamping this uh, produces slightly uh, better looking results. Then that is in a mix amount between um, the color white and a noise. And what this is doing is it's taking this, which looks exactly like that, and it is noising it up so that it looks more like scuff marks. And uh, the noise is just a very simple noise procedural. Uh, you might need to muck with the size a little bit, uh, but otherwise it's uh, very straightforward. And it's mixing these two together. And then once it mixes those, in the output of this map, I do a color map again, and I clamp this value as well. So let me show you some of the results of how these different maps look separately. So before I start showing you the maps, I'm going to show you one other little script that I have called Subdivision Automator. And what this does is when you hit render, uh, every time you hit render, it quickly applies either a turbo smooth, a mesh smooth, or an open subdiv. Um, I'm going to use open subdiv. And then after the render is finished, it takes it off. And it's a really nice way to smooth all of your mesh uh, at render time without having to um, have it inside of your stack all the time. And there's a new option inside of here called Place Below Data Mod. And what this does is it always makes sure that when it puts the uh, open subdiv on, if there's a data modifier like there is here, it always puts it below. So let me, let me just do it a little bit and I hit apply. And it hasn't done anything yet, but it's basically set it up so that next time I render, it's going to put this uh, on the surface. Okay, so now I have another script uh, called text map preview, and what this does is this takes this takes whatever you're currently seeing in the material editor and lets you see just that and none of the the rest of the material. So if I take this and I hit apply. There we go. So you can see in this render, uh, this render uh, looks uh, pretty similar to what we have over here. So you got the black lines uh, around the edges and then white on the, the flat area. So that's what this is doing. It's again, taking this value from uh, map channel 66, it's running it through this gradient and providing this result. Now, if we go up here uh, to the output and you saw that the output is uh, slightly clamped, if I run this again, it is clamping it a little bit so that is a little bit more contrast. Now let's go up one more level and then this level, let's actually turn off the um, color map down here for the moment and we will again hit this and you see what this has done is it's taken that noise which is up here and it's mixed it with the curvature value and now let's enable the color map which is doing that clamp And now you can see that it's creating all these little chunks as though little bits of paint have flaked off the edges of the, the surface. And uh, if you look down here, uh, inside of here, if you move this line either this way or that way, you'll get either more black or less black. So it just depends how much uh, of the paint you want to flake off. So anyway, so that's the mask uh, on the paint surface. And now um, let's close down this. We don't need this anymore. And let's do the full render. And there we go. So you can see you have your paint surface here and the paint surface is being flaked off with this mask which is the curvature mixed with the noise and uh, it reveals the metal which is underneath. So this is a really really great way of getting all the um, um, using the, the the curvature of a surface to do stuff like uh, edge wear effects or um, you could put like scratches instead of being like paint flecks it could be scratches that appear more on these edge parts or whatever you want to do but it allows you to take an object that could be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of separate objects and rather than paint these kind of details, they're doing it procedurally. 
so that you don't have to worry about uh, manually going in there. So one other little detail I wanted to show you um, is let's say that you have your object here and all of a sudden you're like, oh, you know what, I need to add another object to, uh, to this group. And it's a brand new object, so it's just an editable, editable poly. Um, and the one disadvantage of this way of doing curvature is it's not a curvature map, it's a curvature modifier, which means that if you want this object to get the curvature, you can't just apply the same material to it that's here. Uh, you have to um, also apply the modifier, which is here. And that's one reason um, there's another uh, plugin by Boomer Labs called Curve Map, and that's one advantage that Curve Map has still. And that is it's just a map, and so you don't have to worry about applying a modifier as well. So again, lots of different ways of doing the same thing. Um, uh, but now we've got a, another way in here, which is really helpful. So um, it, in this case, what I've done is I've made a second script, again, freely available. And this is called Curvature Manager. So the one that makes the curvature is Curvature Maker. This is Curvature Manager. And it can do a number of different things. Like, for example, say you have like 50 objects with 50 different data channels. Uh, that are all set doing curvature, you can do it so that they all point to the same map channel, or you can do it so that the scales are now all the same. So it's sort of a way to um, take a single value and apply it to all kinds of different objects that are not instanced with each other. But then there's another button here called Propagate to Selected. And so what Propagate to Selected does is um, it will take, uh, if you select objects that have and do not have a curvature modifier, um, I mean the data channel set to curvature, you select all your objects, you say Propagate to Selected, it goes through and it finds the curvature on here, and then it applies it to any objects that don't have the curvature. So now you can see that this object here, which didn't have the curvature before, or the curvature modifier, now has the same one that's over here. And so this is a really useful way if you have a, um, an object and then you need to add a new object to the group after you've already done the curvature. This is a really good way of spreading that curvature to the brand new objects. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, again, uh, there are many different ways of doing curvature. And um, one of the other ways might be better for your personal workflow. Everyone uh, has uh, different ways of doing things. So make sure to check out the other videos. Uh, but this is the technique that I think I'm gonna use for my work from now on. So uh, also remember to visit my website, neilblevins.com in the CG education section if you wanna see more tutorials. And uh, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you would uh, like to be notified the next time I post more uh, art-related videos. So thanks again.